Hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. And uh, we're in the wake of our last video on this one. We're looking at countaches. We're just doing the final preparations for getting Harry's countache out, the red quattrovalvol, with the slightly noisy gearbox. And we're also seeing how Pete's getting on with the electrics on this little baby that's come over from the US. It's proved a little interesting in one or two ways. So let's have a word with Pete and see how he's getting on. Well, we're attacking uh, this on two fronts and we do think we've got it pretty worried. The fluid supply side of it, the petrol fueling side, we've fitted the new pumps which we got, which are of the right pressure. Uh, I made a mistake on the last video uh, and said that they worked at two bar, which they don't. It's considerably higher on the Cajetronic. That's the perils of one take talking like this. But um, these are fuel accumulators, which uh, it's got one each next to each pump. And the diaphragm has obviously gone in these um, because petrol drips out of them when you do that. This is supposed to be a breather and it's supposed to be open to atmosphere and not have any petrol touching it. So they are shot. We've cleaned the tanks out. They had water in them, all sorts of contamination. We've done that. We put some fresh fuel in. And as I say, we think it might have to surrender soon and actually give us a tune. We checked the oil, everything else. So there we are. Let's see what Pete's been up to as well. So Pete, you've been working your magic here. And uh, this looks considerably more convincing than what was on it previously, which wouldn't be difficult. It wouldn't Don't be difficult. Take that no, way. no, you're right. So how did you find out what does what here? Okay. First of all, find out which sort of MSD system has been fitted to it historically. Uh, and we can get wiring diagrams for that. So really, it's getting an understanding of how the circuit's meant to work and then finding out why it doesn't. <laughs> That's it, you know. And where did uh, you a get... long story cut short. Because this is obviously peculiar to the US market with the yeah. injection. Yeah. Uh, so it's got fuel pump relays yeah. too that it wouldn't yeah. normally. Um, how, how did you find that? On so Just looking on the internet? Or? Yeah, I broke it down in two really because we had ignition <clears throat> trouble and fuel trouble. So, okay, first let's sort the ignition out. So once I knew that we'd got everything in the right place there. But um, not necessarily in the right order. Not necessarily in the right order. Um, so once I knew that that worked properly, I could then, you know, put some proper plugs and terminals on yeah. there, which are, which are good. Then moved over to the fuel issue. Again, by looking on the internet, etc., elsewhere, finding out how it should work, and then finding out what, you know, why it didn't. Right. Um, so I kind of jumped a few steps and went straight to the fuel pumps to find out if they worked, which they didn't. So once we got new pumps on there, knowing that they work and then backtracking up the circuit if you like brilliant um and it, it's i say complex it's more complex than the european ones because it's got two separate completely separate fuel systems and two completely separate electrical circuits controlling them yep which is over here which is it? over there which it isn't on the european ones it, it's you know it, it's yeah. in the boot actually just down here so yeah you know it took a bit of time fathoming out really so once we knew we had good pumps on there that actually pumped some fuel, then it's work out, right, how do we get them to actually do that? So again, we had issues with the electrical stuff over there, just down to bad connections, really, you know, a combination of age and water ingress, you know, due to yes. condensation and it's standing. So yeah, it's got three relays that control the fuel. You're being very kind, considering the electrics were left the factory being placed under a grill where somebody <laughs> if somebody's washing the car it would be difficult not to squirt a hose yeah, it's pipe not in the there. greatest bit of design is it but uh <clears throat> so yeah that was you know that was it really it's just time consuming yeah as i say fathoming out how is it meant to work and then making it do that that's great well, so, so now it does so we've got feed to the pumps now we have we've indeed. got two fuel accumulators on order yeah and you think once we've got those hooked up i mean all things being equal, yes. he says extremely optimistically. <laughs> we could get a tune out of it. Oh, no, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, it's, uh, you know, we've had to replace really all the components in the fuel system just because of the old fuel and, yeah, and sure. stuff. It ruins things, you know, with the, because well, of the ingress of water. Yeah, we were caught out a bit with this one because we didn't realise it was a non-runner, but it actually hasn't run for some years no, as it's turned no, out. No, that's right. Uh, well, so we thought it was a runner, is, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, we've, we've got some nice oil in it and everything else and it's all freed up. So 
I'm pretty confident that uh, once we get the fuel system plumbed back in, it'll be up and running. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. You've, beautiful work. Really is Fabulous, amazing. Fabulous, isn't it? I, I think so. Much. No, no, I meant your work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> well, this is another interesting uh, project that we've had in. This is the Citroen SM that was featured a few videos back. And it was this very car that uh, Messrs, to use a very old expression, Messrs Clarkson and Hammond were driving in and actually saying it was a beautiful car. Praise indeed. And Craig has been sorting out the original leather interior. It's this beautiful cognac-y, tobacco-y type of leather colour. And one stage we contemplated retrimming the interior completely because it was almost too far gone, really. But Craig has done a wonderful job in resurrecting this. And we couldn't actually find any leather to match it in terms of texture and exact colour. We just weren't happy with it. But Craig has done a marvellous job of uh, rejuvenating these seats. We've fed them, we've put plenty of hide food in them. He's done some incredibly clever double stitching on the edges and putting letting panels in. And really, I would challenge anyone to know where the old begins and the new ends and vice versa. Absolutely great. So a real result with this. I think the factory leather interior on these SMs really makes them, it looks incredibly exotic for a car of the 70s. The other thing we've done is, is repaired the window mechanisms. The plastic gear, the nylon gear in the window was actually split on both window mechanisms and they, they didn't work. But uh, I'm pleased to say that they, they do now when it's got a battery connected, <laughs> which it hasn't at the moment. Um, but I recognised the little nylon gear when Pete was working on it as a Mura, Lamborghini Mura headlight gear, which was made by the French company Ducellier, as were the window mechanisms. So a bit of synergy there. There aren't too many parts on a Citroen SM that are common to a Lamborghini Miura, but apparently uh, window mechanism and headlamp mechanism winder gears are. So there we are, all good. Let's have a look at the next one. Well, this is the fifth ever production Lamborghini, the 350 GT. And to give you an idea of how personal it all was at this time with Lamborghini, the last car after this, the sixth car, I should say, the next car, was actually uh, made by Ferruccio for his brother Edmondo Lamborghini. So it was a real family affair. This car was burgundy metallic, which it came in, which was a lovely color, but it needed painting. Tony has done lots of uh, letting in and making of new aluminium panels. And this is the original color. It's a 1964 Fiat color, which Lamborghini used the paint on. And it is a gorgeous color. So um, what we're gonna be doing, the interior is back in this. We've reused the seats, which were retrimmed a few years ago, but Craig has made up new carpets for it. And this car is very shortly going to get its maiden voyage. I'm really looking forward to that, driving the, the restored fifth ever production Lamborghini. Quite a special event. Well, hello, Craig. Hi. Good to visit your uh, little <laughs> enclave of the Emporium. <laughs> yeah. Oh, head up a shade. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so here we have the 350 GT boot carpets. Yes. Not looking too wonderful, it has to be said. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how many car manufacturers did actually, no matter what you ordered, they had black boot carpets. Mm. Yeah. Aston Martin DB4, 5 and 6. But we don't know whether these are original or not, actually, because no, who knows no. what the fifth ever production Lamborghini had in it from yeah. you. But you're making up these rather lovely Wilton carpets to match the interior ones. Yes, yeah, we've got a good match with that we had in stock anyway. So yeah, it's, it's going to look really nice. Yeah, um, this, is, um, this is for the binding, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And this is beautiful Connolly Vomol leather. Nothing but the best. <laughs> for um, the boots. For the boots, exactly, <laughs> yes. yes. For the three times that the owner will open it in the next yeah. 10 years. But uh, no, I mean, it, it's going to be stunning. So that's great. That is a really good match with the, in, with the inside. It is, so isn't it? Uh, wonderful. And we've got something funny going on with these indentations, haven't we? Yeah, we couldn't quite manage to see why they were put there. That's why we think they might not be original anyway. Yes, exactly. So we've taken that little checkout on the the, um, on the carpet out of it because it doesn't really need to be there as well no. so they'll look much nicer like that very good um, yeah and uh, love your handiwork on the yeah. SM by the way oh thanks <laughs> that is an amazing job of recovery <laughs> 
Yeah, but Brilliant. they're nice seats, aren't they? They're, aren't they yeah, just they're, they're just great seats. Amazing yeah, it would have been a shame to have, yes, to have gone down how, the retrimming how, yes. yeah, routes that we were going to. Yeah. 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 Great. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the Fiberglass 308 uh, that was just about to break its back. Uh, the chassis was almost rusted through. You could put your hand inside the hole in the chassis and the A-pillars were also rusted through virtually. So the whole car was just about to go like that. Very dangerous. And because people think it's a fiberglass 308, they think that it doesn't rust under the skin. How wrong can somebody be? Because this car really did know how to rust. And I suspect there's a lot of fiberglass Ferrari 308s out there with a sa the same predicament. Any owner of a, a Dino 246, a 308, a 328, even an F40, um, all the, basically the same frame within reason, I would strongly advise they take the bottom undersheet off, the aluminium undersheet, and just have a look at the chassis. If there's any, one thing I can say in this video that might save somebody's life, it's that. But anyway, this is all back together. It's been beautifully painted by Ryan. James has made the A-posts up, we've done a lot of fabrication. We've had the headlining, which is a one-piece fiberglass moulding covered. We've had that uh, repainted by our uh, leatherwork guys, Steve, who does brilliant work. And we're just not far off finishing this car off now. This has been quite a long project, actually, but it's well on the way. Craig's made up some new carpets for it, which are also going in, and some new vinyl panels underneath the seats. It's really looking rather good now. So we'll move on to the next one. Another project that's been going on for some time is, uh, this is Sparda that's come from Belgium and uh, we've done a full engine rebuild on it. And uh, coincidentally, um, this is the, the thing with these catch up videos. We never quite know where everything's up to because it is a working workshop. Alex and Les have been putting the engine back in today and uh, it's gonna be running in 15 minutes, isn't it? <laughs> Give or take. I like that, give or take. A solicitor say it's in hand. So um, there we go. We'll, uh, we'll see how that one progresses as well. One of the things that I've touched on before about these videos is they are an adjunct to the normal business, as I mentioned just now. They're not my core business, as a lot of YouTubers are. And we have to therefore fit everything in as and when it comes up. So here is this Espard engine, which we've rebuilt with new pistons, specially forged, etc., as we usually do. And we just happen to have hit on the time when we're reinstalling it. So here it is in um, speeded up form. It's a 4-litre V12, 4-cam, which was Lamborghini's staple uh, engine for many years. And with great success, it's a very strong engine. And Les, Alex and Jack and Marcus are all on the case here to put it in and we'll be firing this engine up in the next few days and see how it runs. And it's so funny because I personally have been doing this for uh, nearly 40 years now, removing and refitting Lamborghini Espadas, and all of a sudden the videos have made this accessible to uh, a lot of people. So um, life is very, very strange sometimes. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the clip and we'll move on to Harry's Countach next. Well, no Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video would be complete at the moment without a reference to, uh, to Harry's Countach. And here it is. We've got our very small engine hoist here. The engine is almost all deplumbed and ready to come out. We're now at the stage where we're waiting for Harry to pay us another visit and do a video on the engine and gearbox being removed from the Countach. But in the meantime, we've taken all the ancillaries off, including the precious and beautiful downdraft twin choke Weber carburetors, all six of them, which are on the high powered, full power Countach Quattrovalvols. And interestingly, Lamborghini quoted these at 455 brake horsepower, but in real life, they're actually considerably more. But as you can see also, Marcus is getting the trusty A-frame engine hoist ready, which is very much on the conservative side of weight lifting, etc. But when you're dealing with engines that are worth a lot of money and a lot of weight. The last thing we want is for anything to go wrong. So um, better to be on the safe side. There we are. We'll look forward to Harry's next visit and getting this engine out very soon. Thanks very much for watching and um, we'll be back with somebody else very soon.